This is Pre-Calc 12, Chapter 6.5. We're going to look at trigonometric functions, and we're going to look at their characteristics. The first definition is period. This is the length, and it's usually measured in time for a function to repeat itself. And our next definition is cycle. This is the interval from one point to the next point where the function begins to repeat itself. The center line. This is the line between the minimum and maximum of the trigonometric function. So another way to look at this is this is the average value between the minimum and maximum. Next definition is the amplitude. This is the distance above or below the center line. And we can look at it as the distance from the center line to the maximum or the distance from the center line to the minimum. And we can also call it what we've been previously calling it, which is the vertical scale. Our next definition is phase shift. This is another term for horizontal shift. And our next term is sinusoidal function. And there's only two sinusoidal functions. It's sine and cosine. Our next definition is frequency. This is the number of cycles per unit of time, and usually it's per second. And hertz is the number of cycles per second. And for audible sound, uh, we can go as low as 20 hertz, and we can go up to 20,000 hertz. And here's a factoid for you. As you get older, you won't be able to hear the higher frequencies as well. The general form of any transform is A times F of B of X minus C and plus D. And previously we've used C and D here. And this was always H and K. So how do we determine these characteristics from graphs? We can have the amplitude as max minus center line, or we can do max plus min divided by two. So for this curve, we have two minus the center line, which is zero. A is equal to two minus zero, so that's two. So this one is y is equal to two sine x. And for sine x, we can also do max minus min. So one minus negative one and divided by two. So this is two over two and that's one. So when there's no number in front, it's implied that it's a one. And as before, if the absolute value of A is greater than one, this is a stretch. And if the absolute value of A is less than one, this is a compression. Next, we need to know how to determine the period. So this is in the form of y is equal to sine bx. So the period of the regular sine function, we can find by looking for repeating intervals. So period equals three pi minus pi, and that's two pi. And if we want to find the period of the second function, y is equal to sine bx, we take a look at this and this. Going from peak to peak is another way to do it. This is pi over 4, and this is negative 3 pi over 4. So the period is pi over 4 minus negative 3 pi over 4. And that's pi. Analytically, we can calculate the period from the function y is equal to sine bx or y is equal to cos bx. The period is 2 pi over b, where b is greater than 0. So b is equal to 2 pi over the period. So for this function, we have b is equal to 2 pi over pi. 
So B is equal to two in this case. So this is actually sine two X. If we're gonna calculate the period analytically from Y is equal to tan BX, we have period is equal to pi over B, B greater than zero, and we can calculate B as pi over the period. Next, we need to determine the phase shift. And if we have the transform function, y is equal to f of x minus c, and f can be sine, cosine, or tangent, we need to calculate the shift from the y-intercept of the original function. So for sine, we need to find the shift of zero comma zero. For cosine, we have zero comma one. And for tangent, we have zero comma zero. So in this case, we have sine, so we need to determine the shift of zero, zero, and it goes from here to here. So our phase shift is pi over four. So C is equal to pi over four. So Y equals sine X minus pi over four. Remember, if C is positive, we're moving to the right. And if C is negative, we're moving to the left. And again, we always measure C from a point on the Y axis of the original function. And those are our values. And finally, we need to determine the vertical shift. This is of the form Y is equal to F of X plus D. And D is greater than zero, means up. When D is less than zero, that means down. This is the same as when we were using K. And you should always measure D from a point on the X axis. So for here, here, and you would measure how it moves. Uh, another way to look at it is where is the center line? The amount that you shift the center line from the X axis is another way to do it. And that completes this lesson.